we are going to start now the first chapter of class 10th mathematics it is real numbers and this chapter is divided in three lectures so in the first lecture we are going to talk about the basic some basic facts about the real numbers now the first thing that we have over here it is euclid's division lemma so what lemma is lemma means we are saying lemma is a proven statement proven means which is already proved and it is used to prove some another statement so we are talking about euclid's division lemma it means we need not to prove this we are considering that this is already proved so what division lemma saying is that for any two given positive integers a and b there exists unique whole numbers q and r such that a is equal to b q plus r where r lies between 0 and b or we are saying r is less than greater than equal to 0 and r is less than b so if we explain this with an example so suppose we are saying we are dividing the number 117 by 14 so what the division lemma is saying we are saying a and b are two integers positive integer positive integer means a and b can have values 1 2 3 so on so these are a and b over here so we are saying there exists unique whole numbers q and r we have to find two numbers one is the number q and one is the number r such that a is equal to b q plus r so if we write 117 and 14 in this form so what we mean to say is that we want to write 117 this is equal to this is just like 117 is a and we are saying we are having uh, the number b is 14 we have to find the number q and r so we are saying for these two numbers, these two numbers, these are given to us, 117 and 14, these are given to us. We have to find two numbers Q and R such that 117 is equal to 14 plus into Q plus R. So we are saying we can always find such numbers. And the second property of these numbers it is that this R we will calculate over here. It can be 0 and it will be less than b and the value of b we have it is 14 this is the value of b that we have so we have to find such q and r so we are saying how we can calculate these values we are dividing 117 with 14 and we know that 14 8s are 1 1 2 the remainder we have it is 5 so from this what we can do is we can write 117 that is equal to 14 into 8 plus 5 so what we are talking about is that the two numbers we have obtained it is by dividing 117 with 14 and that is why it is called a division lemma that is why it is called division lemma so we are saying that for any two numbers a and b which are positive integers we can find the whole numbers q and r such that a is equal to b q plus r and 0 is less than equal to r is less than b now this number a or we are saying this 117 this is called the dividend this 14 it is called the divisor this 8 is called the quotient and 5 is called the remainder these are the terms that you have to remember this is also mentioned over here a is called dividend b is called divisor q is called quotient and r is called remainder next is a number when divided by 73 gives 34 as quotient and 23 as a remainder find the numbers so we are saying some number is there which when divided by 73 gives 34 as quotient and 23 as remainder 
so what are the values given to us this 73 is the divisor 34 is quotient and 23 is remainder so if we put these values in the euclid's division lemma we get that dividend we have to find the number number means we are talking about what we have to find we have to find the value of dividend so we substitute these values in this formula and we get it is 73 that is divisor into quotient plus remainder so the answer we will get it is 2505 so what this thing means it means if we divide 2505 with 73 the quotient that we will get it is 34 and the remainder that we will get it is 23 now one thing is clear that if we are dividing these values till when we will divide when this value will become less than this there are two options that we have either the remainder will be equal to 0 or remainder becomes less than 73 so what we say that the remainder lies between 0 and b when the remainder uh, lies between these two values then we are saying that we have we will stop doing the division next we have is euclid's division algorithm so what is algorithm first we look at this last we have seen the lemma now it is the division algorithm so algorithm is a series of well defined steps which gives a method for solving a certain type of problem so suppose we have to divide something and there are certain steps how we can find the how we can do the division so those steps they are called the algorithm now what we have is euclid's division algorithm so what euclid division algorithm it is used to calculate the hcf of two given positive integers so we are saying if two number they are given to us integer they are given to us positive integers a and b such that a is greater than b and we have to find the hcf of these two numbers then we have to follow the following steps so first step we have is in the first step we say we divide a by b we get the quotient q and remainder r such that a is equal to b q plus r why this is why this will happen this is just the statement of division lemma this is just the statement of division lemma so we are saying we will divide a with b and we will obtain the value of b and r if r is equal to 0 then hcf of a and b is b we are saying if there are two cases now when we solve these values either we will get r is equal to 0 or r will be between 0 and b if r is 0 then the process is complete and we are saying the hcf of a and b is b now if r is not equal to 0 then we apply the division lemma to b and r we will explain this thing in our next steps that what we mean to say so before that we look at the definition of hcf of two numbers the how classically or in the previous classes you have seen how we can calculate the hcf so hcf is basically if we look at the definition of hcf it is the highest common factor so suppose i am talking about the numbers say 12 and 18 so what hcf means i have to find the factors of these num this number so factors of this number it is 1 2 3 then 4 then 6 then 12 if i am talking about the factors of 18 the factors of 18 are 1 2 3 6 9 these are the fact and 18 these are the factors of 18 so what are the common factors we have started from this term factors first next thing we are talking about is common factors so common factors out of these is 1 2 3 and 6 we are talking about these 1 2 3 and 6 1 2 3 
and C. These are the common factors over here. And out of these common factor, the highest common factor is 6. So we are saying the HCF of 12 and 18, it is 6. This is just how we used to calculate the HCF of two numbers that uh, we will find the factors of those numbers. Then we will find the common factors of those two numbers and then the highest common factor of we will obtain. This, this is one of the methods to find the HCF using the factors of those numbers. This is the Euclid's division algorithm that if suppose we are talking about two large numbers are there, then it is not always feasible to calculate the HCF in this way. So in place of doing this, we have this algorithm, this method to calculate the HCF of those two numbers. And we will see with our next example that what this method and how this, what this method is saying and how this method is applicable. Now suppose we are having the two numbers, uh, 272 and 1032. And we have to find the HCF of these two numbers. So what we have is that this 1032 is greater than 272. So our first step is 1032 and we will divide it with 272. So when we start dividing it, we see 272 into 3 that is equal to 816 and the remainder that is left over here it is 216. So what our division algorithm was saying we have to check this remainder if this remainder if remainder is equal to 0 then the process will complete then, our, then we will stop doing this process and our answer will be 272 but over here we are having some remainder over here so next step what we have to do is we have to consider these two terms 276 and 216 and what we have to do is we have to divide 272 with 216. So when we divide these two values, we see it is 1's 216. The remainder we have it is 56. Again, we will say remainder is not equal to 0. So we divide it with 216 with 56. Now over here, what we will get it is 3's 168. The remainder we will have it is 48. In this case again, we are saying remainder is not equal to 0. Now on the next step, we have to divide 48 over here. Now we have to divide 56 with 48 and the answer we will get it is 1's 48 and the remainder that we will have over here it is 8. Now the next step we will have it is 8 divided by 48 and when we will divide this we will get 6 it's a 48 and the remainder will become 0. Now what we have it is remainder is equal to 0 and we have to stop this procedure when remainder becomes equal to 0. So what we get is the over here we look at this step over here remainder is 0. It means HCF of these two numbers, it is 8. This value we are talking about. The HCF of these two numbers, it is 8. So these steps, these are shown over here. So what we are saying is, in the first step, 1032 when divided by 272, uh, we get it is 3 and the remainder is 216. So we are writing 1032 can be written as 272 into 3 plus 21. 6. Now, since the remainder is non zero, so what we have done, we have written this 272 is equal to 216 into 1 plus 56. Next time, we have written this 216 as 56 into 3 plus 48. In the next time, we have written this 56. This thing is shown in our next slide. 56 is equal to 48 into 1 plus 8. And in the last step, we have written 48 is equal to. This 48 we are talking about. We have written 48 is equal to 8 into 6 plus 0. So what we get is that the HCF of 272 
and 1032 is 8. Now it is interesting to note over here that this HCF of 8 and 48, HCF of 56 and 48, HCF of 216 and 56, 272 and 216, 1032 and 272, all these values have the HCF 8 and this method is known as successive division method. Next we have we have to find the HCF of 196 and 38220. So we have shown the division over here that if we divide 38220 with 196, we see that the quotient we obtain it is 195 and the remainder we obtain it is 0. So remainder over here it is 0. So what we are saying? We are saying that 38220 and 196 when we divide we are obtaining it is 195 over here and the remainder is 0. So we can write 38220 this value we are talking about this is equal to 96 into 95. We are talking about this value is 96 and this value is 95. So what we get from this is that HCF of 196 and 3220 is 196 because the remainder is 0. So, one step is sufficient to find the HCF of these two numbers. Now, the next question we have use Euclid's algorithm to find HCF of 1651 and 2032 and express the HCF in the form uh, 1651 into M and 2032 into n so basically we have to calculate these two numbers m and n so to find the hcf first we are saying it is 2032 and we divide it with 1651 so it is 1 the 1651 the remainder that is left is 381 and this remainder is not equal to 0 so we do the next step and we write 1651 over this 1651 over here and when we divide these two values we see it is 4 the 1524 and the remainder we are left with is 127 again remainder is not equal to 0 so what we get is we have to divide it with 381 and it is 3 the 381 and the remainder we are left is equal to 0. So, what we see is that the HCF over here it is 127. So, what we are saying that the HCF of 1651 and 2032 it is 127. Now, we have to write this HCF in the form 1651M plus 2032N. So, what we are saying that 1651 that is equal to 381 into 4 plus 127. This thing we are obtaining from this step that we are saying 1651 is equal to 381 into 4 plus 127. That is this step we are talking about that 1651 into 4 uh, is equal to uh, 381 into 4 plus 127. So, when we adjust these values, we obtain that 127 is equal to 1651 minus 381 into 4. Now, from the first step, I am talking about this step over here, we have the value of 381 that is equal to 2032 minus 1651 into 1 and if I substitute this value over here 381, so what we get is 127 is equal to 1651 minus 
in place of 381 we are writing it is 2032 minus 1651 into 1 into 4 so when we open all these brackets we will get the answer in the form 127 equal to 1651 minus 3032 into 4 plus 1651 into 4. Now look at these two values, it is 1651, it is 1651 into 4. So when we combine these two values, we get it is 1651 into 5, and this remaining value over here it is 32032 into minus 4. And this is what we have to do, we have to write 127 equal to m into m means this 5 into 1651 and n into 30 uh, so the value of n we have it is minus 4 so this is the answer that we obtain over here that m is equal to 5 and n is equal to minus 4 now the next question we have show that every positive even integer is of the form 2m and every positive odd integer is of the form 2m plus 1 where m is some integer so we are talking about the collection of <coughs> all positive integers positive integer means we are talking about 1 2 3 4 5 and so on so suppose we are saying n is any arbitrary positive integer so n can be 2 n can be 5 n can be 7 any value we are talking about out of this collection we are saying n be any positive integer now if we divide this n by 2 what we have is we will obtain two numbers m and r from the Euclid's division lemma we know that there are two numbers m and r these are the whole number such that n is equal to 2m plus r and the value of r is greater than equal to 0 and less than 2 the remainder is less than 2 so what this thing means is that the value of r can be 0 or 1 it means n can have two forms one is n is equal to 2m when r is equal to 0 and n is equal to 2m plus 1 when r is equal to 1 so what we see is we are talking about this collection of all positive integers we are saying all these numbers these out of these number we are saying n is any arbitrary number so n can be of two forms either n can be of the form 2m or it is 2m plus 1 it means all these numbers they can be written in two forms either of the form 2m or of the form 2m plus 1 so what are the numbers of the form 2m basically we are saying when we are talking about 2m so the value of m when it is 1 we are saying the value of n that is equal to 2 when the value of m is equal to 2 then the value of uh, when we are saying in this case when m is equal to 2 we are saying n is equal to 4 when m is equal to 3 then we are saying n is equal to 6 and so on in this case when we are talking about n is equal to 2m plus 1 what are the numbers we are talking about when we are saying m is equal to 1 then the value of n is equal to 3 and m we have it is the whole number so if we put n is equal to m is equal to 0 in this case we are saying we will get n is equal to 1 and put m is equal to 2 we will get n is equal to 5 and so on so what we see from this is that we have obtained two collections over here one is 2 4 6 8 and so on and second collection we are talking about it is 1 3 5 
likewise these numbers are there so what we are saying is that we have these numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and we have obtained two collections from this and what these collections are basically this collection is shows that n is even and this collection second collection we are talking about it shows that n is odd so what we see is that the collection of these positive integers we are talking about we have obtained two collections so we are saying all the numbers of the form 2m we are saying these are representing the even numbers and all the numbers of the form 2m plus 1 we are saying they are representing the odd numbers so how we can write this is that every positive even integer is of the form 2m and every positive odd integer is of the form 2m plus 1 now next question we have is show that any positive integer is of the form 3m 3m plus 1 or 3m plus 2 for some integer m so again we are saying suppose n is any arbitrary positive integer now what we have to prove is it is of the form 3m 3m plus 1 or 3m plus 2 so from these terms we come to know that we are talking about the divisibility with 3 so we are saying on dividing n by 3 let m be the quotient and r be the remainder then by euclid's division lemma we have n is equal to 3m plus r and the value of r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 3 it means r can have three values r can be 0 r can be 1 or r can be 2 so if we substitute these three values in this equation we get n is equal to 3m n is equal to 3m plus 1 or n is equal to 3m plus 2 and this is what we have to prove that any integer is of the form 3m 3m plus 1 and 3m plus 2 for some integer m next is show that any positive odd integer is of the form 4m plus 1 or 4m plus 3 now when we look at this term it is 4m over here it means we are talking about the divisibility with 4 from this we can judge it is not exactly that in every question it will be like this some questions might be there in which some other value we have to use but in how to judge this that what kind of divisibility we are talking about we have to look at this term over here so in this question it is 4m plus 1 and 4m plus 3 so basically we are talking about the divisibility with 4 over here and we will see whether we are able to find the answer or not so we are saying that n be an arbitrary odd positive integer then we are saying on dividing n by 4 let m be quotient and r be remainder this is this statement we are talking about this is just coming from the we are talking about this statement that n is equal to 4m plus r this thing is given by our euclid's division lemma that we will have two numbers m and r such that n is equal to 4m plus r we are saying n is equal to 4m plus r where 0 is less than or equal to r is less than 4 it means values of r that we have it is 0 1 2 and 3 so when r is equal to 0 we get n is equal to 4m when r is equal to 1 it means n is equal to 4m plus 1 when n is equal to r is equal to 2 it is 4m plus 2 and this is n is equal to 4m plus 3 now out of these numbers if i am looking at this number over here 4m then this number is even because this 4 is there it means whatever value of m i will substitute this number n will be divisible by 2 i am talking about n is equal to 2 into 2m so this thing implies us that n is divisible by 2 similarly when i am writing n is equal to 4m plus 2 i can write it like 2 into 2m plus 1 it means n is divisible by 2 
so it means in both these cases in this case and this case we are saying the number is divisible by 2 that is these are the even numbers and the number n that we have considered when we have started this we are saying n be an arbitrary odd positive integer it means these two cases these are not possible these two cases are not possible so we are saying n is not equal to 4m and n is not equal to 4m plus 2 so what we are left over here is that n is equal to 4m plus 1 or 4m plus 3 for some integer m so we are saying any positive odd integer is of the form 4m plus 1 or 4m plus 3 for some integer m next is show that every positive odd integer is of the form 6m plus 1 6m plus 3 or 6m plus 5 for some integer m again in this question it is 6m plus 1 6m plus 3 and 6m plus 5 so it means we are talking looking at the divisibility with 6 so if we consider that n is an positive odd integer and we divide n by 6 then by Euclid division lemma we are saying there are two whole numbers m and r such that n is equal to 6 m plus r and the values of r can be 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 now corresponding to these values what we get is n is equal to 6 m it is 6 m plus 1 6 m plus 2 6 m plus 3 6 m plus 4 6 m plus 5 these can be the values of and these are the values of n that can have it will have now this 6 m can be written as 2 into 3 m this is 2 into 3 m plus 1 this is 2 into 3 m plus 2 so clearly these three numbers these are even this is even and this number is even so value of n cannot be 6 m it cannot be 6 m plus 2 it cannot be 6 m plus 4 now if we look at this value over here I suppose I am talking about 6 m plus 1 I can write it in the form 2 into 3 m plus 1 uh, like this now what we get from this is this is equal to 2 p plus 1 where p is equal to 3 m and we know all the numbers of the form 2 p plus 1 these numbers are odd similarly if i am looking at this values i can write it like 6 m plus 2 plus 1 this is equal to 2 into 3 m plus 1 plus 1 this is equal to 2 p plus 1 and we know this is number is of 2 p plus 1 these numbers are Similarly, if we are looking at this value over here, we can write it like uh, 2 into 3m plus 4 plus 1. If you look at these two terms over here and we write 2 common from this, we are left with 3m plus 2 plus 1 this becomes 2 p plus 1 again this 2 p plus 1 means this number is an odd number so what we have seen is that there are numbers of the form 6m 6 6m 6 plus 1 6m plus 2 6m plus 3 6m plus 4 6m plus 5 out of these number this 6m 6m plus 2 6m plus 4 these three number these are even numbers so these 
remaining three numbers we are talking about these are the odd numbers so we are saying thus when n is odd it is of the form 6m plus 1 6m plus 3 or 6m plus 5 for some integer m next is using euclid's division lemma show that the square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or 3m plus 1 so we are saying let n be any positive integer on dividing n by 3 why we are dividing it with 3 it is 3 over here so we are dividing it with 3 we are saying q is the quotient and r is the remainder then it means that this n can be written in the form any number n it can be written in the form 3 q plus r now what we have to do is we have to show that the care of any positive integer we are not interested in this n we are interested in the scare of this number so we scare this number we get n square is equal to 3 q plus r square that is equal to 9 q square plus r square plus 6 q into r what are the values of r that we have it is 0 1 or so if we substitute 0 in this we get n square is equal to 9 q square this is for r is equal to 0 if we substitute r is equal to 1 we get n square is equal to 9 q square plus 6 q plus 1 and the third case we are talking about when we substitute r is equal to 2 we get n square that is equal to 9 q square plus 12 q plus 4 so what we have till now is that we are saying that n square can have three forms one is 9 q square second is 9 q square plus 6 q plus 1 and next is 9 q square plus 12 q plus 4 we can write this value as 3 into 3 q square if we substitute this 3 q square is equal to m it means i can write it like 3 times m m is this value 3 q square next second case i am talking about i am writing 3 common from first two terms so i am left with 3 q square plus 2 q plus 1 if i substitute this 3 q square plus 2 q as m in this case i will write the answer it is 3 m plus 1 next in the third case we are writing it is 9 q square plus 12 q plus 3 plus 1 we are writing this 4 as 3 plus 1 it means i am talking about this value will be 3 times 3 q square plus 4 q plus 1 plus 1 this is equal to 3 m plus 1 this is the value of m over here so we are saying that any number n square it can be written in three forms one is 3m one is 3m plus 1 and this is 3m plus 1 n square number that can be written in these three forms so basically what we obtain is that any number can be written in the form 3m or 3m plus And this is what we have to prove that the square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or of the form 3m plus 1. Now next is using Euclid's division lemma show that the cube of any positive integer is of the form 9m, 9m plus 1 or 9m plus 8. So we consider that n is any arbitrary positive integer. Now you can see the divisibility with 9 
or you can see the divisibility with 3. Why we are talking about the divisibility with 3? Because uh, in the question it is given that we have to cube the equation and if we divide this n by 3 we will see that it will serve our purpose in this particular problem we need not to divide it with n Divis div dividing n with 3 will be sufficient to prove this thing so we are saying that there are two numbers q and r such that n is equal to 3 times q plus r where q is the quotient r is the remainder and the value of r can be 0 1 and 2 so we are having two three values of r over here so what we have is when r is equal to 0 we will have n is equal to 3q second case when r is equal to 1 we will have n is equal to 3q plus 1 next is when r is equal to 2 we will have n is equal to 3q plus 2 we are talking about this term over here n we are saying for any integer n positive integer n we can write it equal to 3q plus r r can have three values 0 1 and 2 because we are taking the divisibility with 3 so we have to cube these equations now so we are saying n cube that is equal to 3 q cube that is equal to 27 q cube that is equal to 9 into 3 q now if we write this 3q cube as m so what we obtain is this is equal to 9 times m now in the second case when we cube this equation we obtain n cube is equal to 3q plus 1 whole cube and you will open this cube you will get the answer is 27q cube plus 27q square plus 9q plus 1 out of these terms out of these terms we are taking 9 common and what we are left over here it is uh, 9q you can take common so we are left with this 3q square plus 3q plus 1 plus 1 this term I am talking about, I am substituting q into 3q square plus 3q plus 1 as m and the answer that I will obtain this is 9m plus 1. Similarly in the third case when r is equal to 2, we take n is equal to this, when we cube this equation we obtain n cube is equal to 27q cube plus 54q square plus 36q plus 8 and we can write this equation in the form 9q into 3q square plus 6q plus 4 plus 8 why we are not writing this 8 in other form because it is already less than 9 we suppose in place of 8 it is say 11 then we would have written it 9 plus 2 because we have to take 9 common from it so this 8 is already less than this 9 so when we substitute this q into 3q square plus 6q plus 4 we substitute this value equal to m so the final answer that we will get it is 9m plus 8 so what we have started we are saying n is any number positive integer we are talking about it can be written in the form 3q plus r then n cube can have three forms either it is of the form 9m or it is of the form 9m plus 1 or it is of the form 9m plus 8 
and this is what we have to prove. Next is show that one and only one out of n, n plus one and n plus two is divisible by three, where n is any positive integer. So we are talking about the divisibility with three. So n is given to be any positive integer, and we are dividing it with. We are dividing n by three. So let we are saying q be the quotient and r be the remainder. Then by Euclid's divisional lemma, we have n is equal to three q plus r, where the value of r can be zero, one, and two. It means we have three values of n over here. One is three q, second is three q plus one, and third is three q plus two. We are saying n can have three values: three q, three q plus one, and three q plus two. Now, this number three q plus one, we are saying it is divisible by three. Why? Because this three is there. So any number of the form three q, this will be divisible by three. Now, what basically we have to prove is we are talking about three numbers. One is n, n plus one, and n plus two, and we are saying that one and only one out of these three numbers is divisible by three. So if we take any number n, then What we have is we are saying we are taking any number n. It can be of three forms. Either it is of the form three q, it is of the form three q plus one, or it is of the form three q plus two. So first case we are talking about we have considered any number n, and it is of the form three q. Then it is clearly divisible by Now, if the number is of the form three q plus one, we are saying that n is equal to three q plus one. Then, what is the value of n plus two? That is three q plus three. Three we have taken common. It means if the number n is of the form three q plus one, then N plus two is divisible by three. Similarly, if n is equal to three q plus two, then n plus one that is equal to three q plus three. Three into q plus one, it is divisible by three. So what we see is in this case when n is equal to three q plus two, then n plus one is divisible by three. So what we have is that out of n, n plus one and n plus two, one and only one out of these is divisible by three. I am again repeating what we wanted to prove in this is that one out of n, n plus one and n plus two is divisible by three. Suppose I am talking about the number seven. So we are saying this number seven that is equal to n. So we are talking about three numbers. One is seven. Next number we are talking about is eight. That is n plus one. This is n. And next number we are talking about is n plus two. That is equal to nine. So we are saying for any number n. One and only one of these three numbers is divisible by three. So, what we have done, we are saying if we consider any number n, it can have three forms. Either it is of the form three q, it is of the form three q plus one, or it is of the form three q plus two. If I am talking about n is equal to seven, so it is three into two plus one. So this is basically of the form three q plus one. And we have seen over here if it is of the form three q plus one, it means n plus one. N plus one means this number I am talking about. This is divisible by eight. In place of this, suppose I am talking about n is equal to say eleven. Now what we will have? 
you can write it is 3 into 3 plus 2 so this number is of the form 3 q plus 2 and when we are saying it is of the form 3 q plus 2 I'm talking about this case over here it means this number for this number n plus 1 is divisible by 3 and n plus 1 that is equal to 12 and it is divisible by 3 this is what we are proving in this question now next is show that 1 and only 1 out of n n plus 2 and n plus 4 is divisible by 3 now again in this question we are saying that n is any number that we have positive integer then n is divided by 3 q is the quotient r is the remainder then by euclid division lemma we have n is equal to 3 q plus r it means any integer n it can be of the form 3 q or 3 q plus 1 or 3 q plus 2 we are talking about any integer is there then it can have these three forms now first we are saying suppose we have any integer and it is of the form 3 q then what we have is we can write this 3q is equal to 3 into q and it is divisible by 3 it means if the number is of the form 3q then it that number itself is divisible by 3 next if the number is of the form 3q plus 1 if this number is of the form 3q plus 1 then what we will have is that 3q plus 1 plus 2 I'm talking about this is the number n so n plus 2 becomes 3q plus 1 plus 2 this is 3q plus 3 3 common it is q plus 1 so this number is divisible by 3 in the third case I'm talking about 3q plus 2 so when we are saying 3q plus 2 that is n is equal to 3q plus 2 I'm talking about n plus 4 4 that is equal to 3q plus 2 plus 4 so that is equal to 3q plus 6 3 is common we are left with q plus 2 and this number we are saying it is divisible by 3 so we are saying we are having three cases case 1 if n is equal to 3q then n is divisible by 3 if n is equal to 3q plus 1 because n can have three kind of numbers n can be of three kind of number one either it is of the form 3q 3q plus 1 or n can be of the form 3q plus 2 so if it is of the form 3q plus 1 then n plus 2 will be divisible by 3 and if it is of the form 3q plus 2 then n plus 4 will be divisible by 3 so we are saying that one and only one out of n n plus 4 and n plus 2 is divisible by 3 again if we look at this problem uh, in the converse way or the opposite way suppose i am saying the number 13 is given to us then we are saying this n is equal to 13 so we are talking about three numbers one is 13 one is 15 and one is 17 we are talking about these three numbers so we are saying one of these numbers will be divisible one and only one of these numbers will be divisible by three now it depends upon what form these numbers have so we are saying if we look at this number 13 over here this 13 is of the form 3 into 4 plus 1 it means we are talking about the case so what we have is that n plus 2 is divisible by 3 in this case and it is clear from here that n plus 2 is 15 and it is divisible by 3 so we are saying for n is equal to 13 n plus 2 is divisible suppose i am talking about n is equal to 14 so n is equal to 14 means i am talking about the form 3 into 4 plus 2 this is the third case over here it means 
एन प्लस फोर इज डिविजिबल बाय थ्री सो एन प्लस फोर मीन्स वी आर टॉक अबाउट एन इज इक्वल टू फोर्टीन एन प्लस फोर मीन्स एटीन इज डिविजिबल बाय थ्री सो वट वी सी इज फॉर एनी वैल्यू एन फॉर एनी वैल्यू एन मीन्स वी आर टॉक अबाउट एनी पॉजिटिव इंटीजर इफ वी टेक आइडर दैट इंटीजर दैट इंटीजर प्लस टू और दैट इंटीजर प्लस फोर वन आउट ऑफ दीज थ्री वैल्यूज विल बी डिविजिबल बाय थ्री सो नेक्स्ट इज इफ एन इज एन ऑड इंटीजर देन शो दैट एन स्केयर माइनस वन इज डिविजिबल बाय एट नाउ इट इज डिविजिबिलिटी बाय एट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सपोज वी स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग दिस क्वेश्चन बाय यूजिंग दिस थिंग दैट इफ एन इज एन ऑड इंटीजर देन एन कैन बी ऑफ द फॉर्म 2m plus 1 for some m. <coughs> Now, if we find the value of n square, we will get it is 4m square plus 4m plus 1. So, n square minus 1 that will be 4m square plus 4m. 4 we will take common. Say 4m we have taken common and we are left with m plus. One, so we are not able to prove the divisibility with it. So in place of writing this form, suppose we are saying uh, that uh, we are taking the divisibility of n with four. So n can have the values. We are saying four m, four m plus one, four m plus two, and four m plus three. Now it is given that n is an odd integer. n is an odd integer means that 4m and 4m plus 2 is not possible. So we are saying there are two cases over here. Either n is of the form 4m plus 1, or n is of the form 4m plus 3. Now we have to calculate the value of n square minus 1. In this case, it is n square is equal to 16 m square plus 8 m plus 1. So n square minus 1 will be equal to 16 m square plus 8 m. You can take 8 common, m common, and we are left over here. It is uh, 2 m plus 1, and I can write this whole term as. Q, so it is 8 Q. It means what we have is that n square minus 1 is divisible by 8. Next, the second form we will have it is 4 m plus 3. We are saying n is odd, so n is either of the form 4 m plus 1. If it is of the form 4 m plus 1, then it is divisible by 8. Now n is equal to 4 m plus 3. If it is of this form. Then n square is equal to sixteen m square plus twenty four m plus nine. N square minus one is equal to sixteen m square plus twenty four m plus eight. We take eight common from this, and what we are left over here it is two m square plus three m plus One, this is eight times sum q. So what we get is that n square minus one. It is divisible by eight. So what we are saying is, if n is an odd number, then it can be of two form. Either it is of the form four m plus one, or it is of the form four m plus three. We have proved that if it is of the form four m plus one. Then it is divisible by eight. If it is of the form four m plus three, in this case also it is divisible by eight. And this is what we have to 